the name of the fields are case sensitive. So instead of name like this, I put name all in capital letters and I try to load it, I will see an error. Okay, so the field name was not found. That's because it does not exist. Unless I go back to my table and change here with all capital name, all capital letters, save the file, go back and reload everything. Okay, but you understood that this is not the way to go, right? So going back, we have now only the first letter in capital and we can also delete from here some columns. So what would happen if I just delete the H column? I can load the data, no problem. But when I go back to my visual, I don't have the H column in here. So as you can see, I don't, it's not finding the name column because it's now in capital letters. Let me just rename this. But this column was not found because it has the age field. Okay. And we don't have this field right here. Let's go back. Let's add it again in here, load it. And now our visual is back as it should. Notice that after the fields, we have a comma and only in the last field, we don't have anything. Okay. If I put a comma in here, everything after the, the comma will be red because it's showing us that there's an error because the last field should never have this comma. Now let's say that we have multiple columns and they have very similar names. We want to differ them with some alias and rename these columns. So let's say that this name column should be renamed to first name. I can type here S, which is the command for renaming the column. And now I will type first name. If I want to have a space between these two words, I can have that, but I should use either brackets in the beginning at and at the end or double quotes like this. Okay. Now, if I go back after loading the data, click automatically detected that this field was renamed. So now I have the first name field and we can do the same with the others. When we work with other developers, it's very important to leave everything very well explained so that others can also uh, keep developing the work that was done and understand what was built, right? And to do that, we can add comments in our script. So there are two ways to add comments. The first one is the row comment. We can add two uh, slashes like this. And everything that I type here, everything that I type in this row will not be read by click. So I can add anything here, click load script, and this will just be ignored. Okay. But now if I type something here, it's not ignored. Okay. As you can see, it's, we have colors. So if I type here, load, uh, it will be interpret, interpret by, it will be interpreted by click. And if I type, if I click here and load again, we'll have uh, an error because there's nothing to be loaded after this comment. Okay. But now if I type slash slash, it will be ignored. Okay. We can comment the section automatically by selecting the rows that we want and clicking here. So we can comment or uncomment the selected text. Okay. So doing the same thing again, and we have the text back. And the other way to do that is by adding the slash and star. Now, everything that I type in here, it doesn't matter what or where will be ignored until I type the opposite, which is a star slash. Now I can type my load statement again and everything from here will be interrupted by click. Just this part that will be ignored. Okay. So a good practice is to 
So a good practice So a good practice is to leave comments on the top or in places where it's very visible and we can define the text. So it's a good practice to leave comments explaining what was created or things like that. So we can create sections like this to explain everything that is in this section. For example, loading the table X with the data and your observations.